So my couple minutes on the executive order process, I'm a little long-winded, I'm sorry. Um, the EO, the executive order, provides a customer a legal way to register and drive your vehicle in California. I mean, um, there's other states that are starting to participate in this, and it's just going to roll into probably all of them at some point. But uh, uh, the EO process is a means of showing and ensuring uh, the modification does not reduce or inhibit. That's, the, that's why they're doing it. That's why you need it on there, um, so you can pass smog and that you know you won't get a ticket for having you know modifications to your car because you've got the sticker that says this one's not going to reduce the emissions relative to their standard, and that's the original standard. Um, so the current products that are going to be uh, up next is this Katana 2, and we'll be taking that through the EO process uh, very soon. We've already got the paperwork in. And we're waiting for uh, to go through the initial paperwork before we go test. But it, it, we're already, we're in process already. That will be coming. Um, this is just a, a sheet to show you kind of uh, a summary of the emission tests. And I know you can't read anything there. I can't even read it. <laughs> but it's uh, uh, some of the tests uh, that the OE goes through that Lotus went through, and it's the FTP 75, which is a, a 2300 second test. It's very uh, it's, it's been around since 1975, and um, there's also supplemental tests, uh, high speed, high load, air conditioning, things like that. Um, these are Lotus cars that are under there for 2010, I believe. Um, uh, so kind of, I'm just going to briefly go through the executive order process. Um, so uh, we developed the product with legality in mind. We know we're not taking catalysts off, and, and you know, unless it's a track car or something like that. Uh, we want all the diagnostics to work. Um, basically design that at the beginning and not try to band-aid it at the end. Um, we make our application to the Air, Air Resources Board, which is CARB or ARB. Um, they'll invent it. Once they say OK, they'll ask for a bunch of information, uh, whether it's uh, drawings, installation instructions, photos, anything else that when they, they want to know what kind of hoses you use um, you know, so that they're, they're not evaporating into the atmosphere. Uh, and then once you provide them enough information, <coughs> you get the uh, OK to test letter, which is basically say, OK, we've got all the paperwork done. We, we understand this. Uh, then we set up the testing at, at, a, at a laboratory of our choice. Um, it's on their list. And um, we go test. The idea is to pass the testing, obviously. Uh, and this is typically what we will um, what we go through, it'll be tailpipe emissions and, and readiness codes. And this is basically tailpipe emissions is, is what they're measuring in the tailpipe. Um, and we're getting judged relative to the OE standard. So if it's a, a LEV2 car, then we're going to, we also have to meet LEV2, which is a, a level of, of emissions. Uh, we'll typically run the federal test procedure in the US 6, which is high speed, high load. They decided, you know, 50 miles an hour, no one drives that fast anymore, like the federal test pr procedure has you do. So now they've got an 80 mile an hour test that they had added to it. They didn't replace it because they got all these, you know, 25 years of 35 years of data. So now we just added another test. So it gets more and more expensive. <laughs> um, and then the readiness codes, this is something that every car has, every production car has. And this is basically the internal diagnostic system that says, okay, all the systems are working. It'll perform a test and say all the systems are working. And um, it's, I'm ready to set a code if I need to. If you unplug a sensor, uh, the readiness code for you know, um, misfire or something will, will go off uh, and say, and it'll, it'll turn itself off. So when you go to a smog station and you, know, you took your catalyst off and it won't set catalyst efficiency monitor anymore, this readiness code will say, not available. And then the guy will say, no. <laughs> get out of here. Um, so we, we keep that in mind. Uh, as we're, we're calibrating and we don't go in and, and uh, do anything to them, we're, we're making the car run as it should. Uh, and then if they want to give you additional tests to run based on maybe you change the fuel tank or something like that, then you might have to run an evaporative test or something like that. But typically power uh, tests, like we're adding a supercharger, they've got specific categories for that. So we're, we're in known territory there. And then uh, quickly, they pro uh, the lab pr provides the results. ARB reviews it, and they say yay or nay. Um, and then if, you're, if everything looks good, they'll send you and you'll get a test letter that says, good to go. Put your sticker on the car and with, with this package, and that's all you need. So when you go to the smog station, they see your sticker, they see your supercharger, and they freak out, and then they see your 
your, your sticker and then say, okay, good enough. I don't have to look the other way anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, give you an idea. I've taken, I just wanted to show you that uh, these are some of the cars I've taken through. Um, at the OE level, I've taken the uh, Saturn View and LS, as well as the Chevrolet Cobalt and Saturn Ion all the way through the process from basically starting with a complete mule car all the way through, you know, a few years of production uh, and then getting it ready for start production, which is all the certification, all the tests, and that's all the initial, um, you know, 47 tests you have to run and pass uh, while you're developing. Uh, from the aftermarket, um, uh, this is kind of more relevant from, from, from the EOS aspect. Um, I, I typically, I used to work at Dynam, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and I've taken the M3 and the M5 V10, um, M3 V8 and M5 V10 stroker motors through. Uh, I got those through about four months ago. Uh, I've also taken the twin turbo 135, 335 um, M54 engine uh, and got the EO on those as well, uh, as well as all the components that are separate from that. So that's got a little bit of my background that I've, I've done it a little bit. I want you to be, feel comfortable that this isn't my first time through it. So. Um, and I want to thank you for listening. Uh, we can have more questions if you'd like. Uh, I want to thank Chanu and Sector and Bill and uh, Eric with suspension, Janine, obviously. Uh, but if you've got questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best.